The protocol is Ethereum's dank and update all it's cracked up to be. Some developers think that shifting the Ethereum ecosystem further towards Layer 2 networks could risk setting it down the wrong path. The main news this week centers around today's Ethereum upgrade Denkan, which marks the blockchain's biggest technical shift in over a year. As Coindesk's Margox Nakrik reports, the upgrade could help slice fees for Ethereum users through protodank sharding, an upgrade that's designed to optimize the network for Layer 2 Altwo roll-up networks like Optimism and Arbitrum. On the other hand, some developers warn that the shift could fragment the Ethereum ecosystem and set it down a path that risks costing it its competitive edge versus competing chains. In this week's issue of the protocol, developers are debating whether Denkan will be a good or a bad thing for the Ethereum network. Investors and builders are breathing new life into the PIN networks that merge the physical and blockchain worlds to deliver on crypto use cases. Legacy financial institutions like MasterCard, Goldman Sachs, and BNY Mellon are continuing their march into the blockchain domain through new crypto partnerships and pilot programs. Top picks from the past week's Protocol Village column, Swell, Polygon, Ijin Layer, Vega Protocol, Nibiru, Raramo, Burnt Bank Section. Over $160 million of blockchain project fundraises. This article is featured in the latest issue of the Protocol, our weekly newsletter exploring the tech behind crypto, one block at a time. Sign up here to get it in your inbox every Wednesday. Also, please check out our weekly The Protocol podcast. Network news. Ethereum upgrades. Ethereum's biggest upgrade in over a year has finally happened. The update, Denkun, contains a slate of code changes designed to improve Ethereum for developers and make it quicker and cheaper for end users. The main one that people are paying attention to is protodank sharding, which will allow abstract blobs of data to be posted to Ethereum alongside plain old transactions. The idea of adding new lanes to the Ethereum highway via sharding is not a new one, but this first stab at the technique zeroes in specifically on decreasing fees for the Layer 2 chains that are rapidly becoming the primary venues by which people transact on Ethereum, which has seen its fees soar in recent years with rising network traffic. Developers hope the change will ramp up capacity on the network, allowing outwell blockchains like Arbitrum, Optimism and Coinbase's base network to post larger volumes of data to Ethereum without paying an arm and a leg to do so. While blobs could help slice gas fees for Altwell users, there remains some uncertainty around the extent to which protodank sharding will ease. The chain's fee woes, as any city planner will warn Ethereum's core developers, adding lanes to a highway or shard slash blobs to a blockchain may not ease congestion as intended. Some developers have also voiced concern that Ethereum's embrace of L2s and native data availability risk fragmenting the ecosystem and could lose the base chain its competitive edge versus rival networks. Going deep, in on Depin, speeds are improving and fees are reducing across blockchains, but we're 15 years into the crypto revolution and few use cases have caught on outside of the narrow realms of memecoins and finance. One of the major trends helping to expand the crypto conversation beyond DeFi and infrastructure is decentralized physical infrastructure networks, or Depin, which meld the physical world with blockchains to accomplish everything from easing supply chain inefficiencies to deploying unused compute resources. Projects that bridge blockchains with physical goods are nothing new. Helium, one of the more infamous examples of a DPIN project, is trying to create a wireless network that rewards contributors for setting up Wi-Fi hubs. Filecoin, a veteran data storage blockchain, rewards people for lending their unused hard drive space and remains a go-to example of how blockchain tech can solve real-world problems. The DPIN moniker was on the tip of everyone's tongue at last week's ETH Denver conference, but one might be tempted to wave it away as yet another marketing term meant to entice investors and users to tired ideas. But things have changed recently in the DPIN space. With improved blockchain tech and AI hype, buoyed by a surge in investor dollars, fueling the rise of newer projects like the compute-focused Akash and Render networks. If nothing else, the DPIN space is one to keep an eye on because it could help present an answer to an age-old question that has plagued crypto since its inception, where are the use cases? Also, MetaMask, a leading crypto wallet, teams up with MasterCard to begin testing what it says will be the first blockchain-powered payment card. Camino Finance revises the point-turning rules for its Camino token airdrop in response to community backlash, promising additional rewards for long-term users, though the specifics of the changes remain undisclosed. Goldman Sachs, BNY Mellon and more than a dozen other banks, custodians, and crypto firms are working with blue-chip financial blockchain provider Digital Asset to pilot a program for tokenized asset transference and settlement. PancakeSwap, the decentralized exchange, unveils a new version that it says is designed to make trading more efficient. Protocol Village 
Top picks of the past week from our Protocol Village column, highlighting key blockchain tech upgrades and news. Ethereum staking protocol Swell has introduced a Layer 2 roll-up with $1 billion in total value locked TVL using Polygon's chain development kit CDK. Swell developed the roll-up alongside Ethereum Scalar Alt Layer and a 16 spec crypto staking project Igen Layer. The roll-up will take the form of a restaked roll-up, which comes with a range of services such as decentralized sequencing, verification, and faster finality, Swell said on Wednesday. Vega Protocol, a purpose-built blockchain for decentralized derivatives trading, is launching the first futures markets for points, according to the team. The first markets are for Igen layer points, with more expected soon. Vega uses UMA's optimistic oracle to resolve each point's market at the time of the airdrop event, which triggers settlement and determines the price per point. Users can assert claims to the oracle, which are verified on-chain if undisputed. This decentralized framework enables complex market rule sets without relying on a single centralized custodian. Nibiru Chain, a Layer 1 blockchain built by founders from Google, Tendermint, IBM and Sommelier, is announcing the launch of its public mainnet, according to the team. Nibiru aims to address users' onboarding challenges and provide a fully mainstream decentralized multi-chain solution. It is capable of processing 40,000 TPS with instant finality, made possible through parallel optimistic execution. Smart contracts on Nibiru are written in Rust Cosm Wasm, which runs in the WebAssembly runtime, according to the project's documentation. Members of the RMO community, a digital identity protocol, revealed that Rasyat Wathani 24 is the first use case of the recently launched Freedom Tool, an open-source solution for citizen-run, surveillance-free elections and polling. According to the team, Rasyat Wathani 24 is an encrypted polling app allowing dissenting Russian citizens to sign petitions, vote in polls and participate in protest elections without being traced. As a Freedom Tool application, Rasat with only 24 uses zero-knowledge cryptography servers to ensure the safety and anonymity of its users and votes are published directly onto the blockchain where they are tamper-proof. It was announced by opposition activist Mark Fedgin. Burnt Banksy announced the launch of Xin Mainit, the first blockchain purpose-built for mainstream adoption and the first to use ESC, a fully reserved digital dollar, as its primary transactional currency, according to the team. The announcement was made as part of Burnt's exclusive performance in New York, during which the founder lit himself on fire and subsequently sectioned a flame, symbolizing a new light for the crypto industry. Image shared by a rep of Burnt Banksy's performance at Shin Blockchain. Launch in Brooklyn on Wednesday. Burnt Banksy see the entire protocol village list from this past week here. Debating Dan Kun, will Ethereum's big update help or harm the network? Ethereum's biggest update in over a year, Dan Kun, finally arrived on Wednesday after years of planning. It's seen as a good thing but maybe not universally so. Proto Dank sharding, the main change coming with the Denken update a portmanteau of two simultaneous updates, Deneb and Cancun, marks Ethereum's first step down the road of sharding, a method for increasing the chain's transaction capacity by adding new lanes to its proverbial blockchain highway. The feature is specifically aimed at reducing fees for layer 2 roll-up networks, chains like Optimism, Arbitrum and Coinbase's base network that Run on top of Ethereum and offer users the ability to transact for cheap without leaving the ecosystem entirely. While many developers are celebrating Denkun for its potential to accelerate Ethereum towards improved affordability, others worry that it risks setting the ecosystem down a path that could, in the long run, come back to bite it. The Denkun upgrade is Ethereum's response to clear needs. For greater scalability, Rich Rines, an initial contributor at Core DAO, which develops blockchain infrastructure, said in a message to Coindesk. With Denken, Ethereum is focusing on empowering Layer 2 solutions, but questions remain whether this is a long-term fix. Click here for the full interview by Sam Kessler Money Center. Rand Hindi, CEO of Zama Zama Fundraising's open source. Cryptography firm Zama has raised $73 million in series of funding to develop applications based on fully homomorphic encryption FHE, a technology that enables data to be processed without decrypting it, potentially useful for protecting privacy in blockchain and AI. The funding round was led by Multicoin Capital and Protocol Labs, Zama announced via email on Thursday. Participating investors included Solana co-founder Anatoly Yakovenko, Filecoin founder Juan Bennett and Ethereum and Polkadot co-founder Gavin Wood, according to a press release. Eclipse Labs, the company building a blockchain to scale Ethereum using parts from Solana, raised $50 million ahead of its main debut, which should come within weeks. According to the story by Coindesk's Danny Nelson, Eclipse seeks to use a mix of technology from Solana, Celestia, Ethereum, and Risk Zero for its proposed scaling solution, basically speed like Solana with security provided by Ethereum. Apps built for Solana will be able to run on Eclipse with minimal changes, with SOL being the token of the realm.
Fjord Foundry, a token sale platform, has raised $4.3 million in a seed round led by Lemis Gap with participation from Mechanism Cap, Z Prime Cap, Castle Capital and various renowned angels, according to the team. Fjord offers a host of token sale methods including its liquidity bootstrapping pools LBPS which prioritize equitable distribution, mitigating the risk of whale manipulation and bots. The round comes as Fjord is preparing to announce all-inclusive chain aggregation and the upcoming launch of its native utility token FJO. Clear Token, a cryptocurrency clearinghouse, has received over $10 million in seed investment from institutional investors including Namira, GSR and LMAX Digital, the company said Wednesday. Elixir, a decentralized network that improves liquidity across order book exchanges, completed an $8 million Series B funding round, bringing the project's valuation to $800 million, according to the team. Blowail, a San Francisco-based AI-powered platform designed to connect companies with Web3 wallet holders, disclosed that it raised $7 million in seed funding. NFTFI, a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized lending protocol for loans collateralized with NFTs, has raised $6 million in a Series A on fundraising, led by placeholder VC, bringing total funding to $15 million, according to the team. New York-based Blackwing, founded by Xmeta and Robinhood Vets, raised $4.5 million, led by HashVC and Yumi Crypto's capital, according to the team. Data and Token's Ethereum network revenue surges to nearly two-year highs as a speculative frenzy around meme coins boosts trading activity per into the block. Retail traders have caused Ethereum-based meme tokens such as Pepe Pepe, Shiba Inu Ship, and Floki Floki to more than double in price. Optimism, the Ethereum Layer 2 scaling solution, sells $89 million worth of its OP governance tokens in a private transaction to an undisclosed buyer, with the tokens vesting over two years. Solana-based DeFi protocol Camino announces it will airdrop its Camino governance token in April, with the amount distributed based on users' accumulated points. From using Camino's products, Ether, Phi, the liquid restaking protocol on Ethereum, is set to introduce its long-awaited EFI token on Binance Launchable next week, Domo. The pseudonymous creator of Bitcoin's Ethereum-inspired BRC20 tokens addresses thorny blockchain governance issues by partnering with two former sparring partners to co-maintain the protocol, Data, and Tokens Ethereum. Network revenue surges to nearly two-year highs as a speculative frenzy around meme coins boosts trading activity per into the block. Retail traders have caused Ethereum-based meme tokens such as Pepe Pepe, Shiba Inu Ship and Floki Floki to more than double in price. Optimism, the Ethereum Layer 2 scaling solution, sells $89 million worth of its OP governance tokens in a private transaction to an undisclosed buyer, with the tokens vesting over two years. Solana-based DeFi protocol Camino announces it will airdrop its Camino governance token in April, with the amount distributed based on users' accumulated points from using Camino's products. Ether, Phi, the liquid restaking protocol on Ethereum, is set to introduce its long-awaited EFI token on Binance Launchable next week, Domo. The pseudonymous creator of Bitcoin's Ethereum-inspired BRC20 tokens addresses thorny blockchain governance issues by partnering with two former sparring partners to co-maintain the protocol. Regulatory and policy Wyoming recognizes decentralized autonomous organizations DAOs as decentralized unincorporated nonprofit associations offering them legal existence, the ability to contract, pay taxes, and limited liability. U.S. President Joe Biden proposes a budget that includes a crypto mining excise tax and the application of wash trading rules to digital assets, aiming to generate significant revenue and address environmental concerns associated with crypto mining. Former U.S. President Donald Trump expresses a more constructive view towards Bitcoin on CNBC, acknowledging its widespread use and suggesting it has become an additional form of currency, marking a significant shift from his previous stance where he labeled Bitcoin as a scam. Coinbase, the largest U.S. crypto exchange, has filed a lawsuit against the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, accusing the agency of acting arbitrarily and capriciously by refusing to establish clear rules for the oversight of the crypto industry. Data Corner Digital asset investment funds experienced a significant surge in weekly inflows this week, reaching a new record of $2.7 billion and bringing the total for the year to $10.3 billion, as reported by CoinShares. This influx has primarily been driven by Bitcoin BTC, which contributed $2.6 billion to the week's total. According to CoinShares, the new inflows mean the industry could potentially surpass its record annual inflow of $10.3 billion set in 2021, all less than three months into 2024.
U.S. based spot ETFs have been actively acquiring thousands of Bitcoin coins daily, coinciding with a major price rally that saw Bitcoin reaching a new all time high of over $72,000. Additionally, Solana SOL saw inflows topping $24 million last week, indicating broadening interest in cryptocurrencies beyond just Bitcoin. Calendar March 1820, Digital Asset Summit London. April 2024 Estimate, Next Bitcoin Having, April 812, Paris Blockchain Week, April 1819, Token 1049, Dubai, May 910, Bitcoin Asia, Hong Kong, May 2931, Consensus, Austin, Texas, June 1113, Apex, the XRP Ledger Developer Summit, Amsterdam, July 811, FCC, Brussels, July 2527, Bitcoin 2024, Nashville, August 1921, Web3 Summit, Berlin, September 1921, Solana Breakpoint, Singapore. September 17, Korea Blockchain Week, Seoul. September 30, October 2, Masari Mainit, New York. October 911, Permissionless, Salt Lake City. October 2122, Cosmoverse, Dubai. Nov 1214, 2024, Deccan 7, Bangkok. November 2021, North American Blockchain Summit, Dallas. February 1920, 2025, Consensus HK, Hong Kong.